Mr. Sebastian, you've really traveled all over the world and you've had some quite impressive interview partners, prime ministers, kings, presidents. What was your most memorable interview so far? Well, the ones that are most memorable are the ones where everybody fights back and quite a few people fight back these days. Nobody takes it all lying down, so they give as good as they get. People are very tuned to media interviews these days. They come very well prepared. So what was the toughest nut to crack on conflict zone so far? Which guest? Toughest nut to crack? Probably the Afghan president, the one we've just done. Um, he fought back and there were some memorable moments when he wanted to get his say in, um, wanted to, uh, to stop me interrupting. Yeah, I would finish my sentence. It may answer your question. Uh, but should you like please. interruption? No, no, I would please. be delighted please. to, to please permit you to enter continuously into my sentences. Please, please may finish, I? please. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. He was a good sport, I have to say. You just mentioned interrupting. That's kind of your style, right? You are very confronting. And some of no, our. No, 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 no. I'm not confronting. No, I'm direct. I'm direct, and I may be insistent on having the question answered because that's because I'm asking it on behalf of the audience who can't do it for themselves. So the invitation to the interview partner is not for him to give a speech or her to give a speech, it's to answer a direct question. That's what we're looking for. See, some of our social media users, they think you're sometimes interrupting a little bit too much maybe, or you even sometimes maybe rude. What would you say to these people? Definitely not rude, because the Europeans Excuse will never Excuse run the me. risk of doing that, team. will they? Team. Of offending Ru Russians. Russian. But you're putting 20% more May I finish my India. sentence? Yeah, please. Not to, but my question is, but, why but, do you need to do it when you have Article 5 right. of the NATO may Charter? I may I finish the sentence? Wait, and wait. tax increases, Tim, Tim, let me backtracking finish. on let me economic finish. reforms. Let me finish. Never try to be rude, um, direct certainly, but I'm trying to get them answers which they wouldn't otherwise get. We're dealing with people who use the media to very good advantage, they're very well trained, and I'm trying to get through the spin to the truth. And sometimes you have to be very direct and insistent to do that. All the system. Currently, the fact currently, is, you don't want no, you no, don't want any no, no, because of the migrants, no, do you? Currently, we, no, no. Currently, you don't we, want it. No. And where does really unique uh, interview style come from? Did you always, you know, interrupt and be really direct and get to the point and hard-hitting questions, or did you somehow develop that during the years? Yeah, I became an angry old man, and <laughs> that's how it works. You know, when you're an angry old man, you really want answers, and you feel time slipping away, so you haven't got a lot of time to sit and wait for people to get round to answering. Besides, we're talking about things that are important. We're talking about matters of life and death. In May this year, Human Rights Watch condemned the Gulf countries, Qatar included, for the widespread practice of penalizing legitimate dissent in the name of national security. Much more important than whether the person sitting opposite me is offended by, did I interrupt or didn't I interrupt? I'm trying to get matters of real importance answered for people. It's a public service. Has there ever been a time where after an interview really kind of still thought about it and it still resonated with you and you somehow even maybe dreamt about it or it somehow did something to you? Dreamt about it? No, I don't think so. Um, but I think uh, you're often touched by people in very difficult circumstances, uh, people who find things in themselves that they didn't expect to find. Courage, that's one thing. Um, yeah, some of them live on with you. And some of them actually, some of the people I've interviewed actually became friends. Like who? I'm not going to tell you that. Why not? <laughs> because I'm not. When did you decide you want to become a journalist? I didn't want to be a journalist. I wanted to be a vet. But I was so lousy at science and maths that they said you're never going to pass the exam. So I looked around for something else to do. And uh, it's probably a good idea that I didn't become a vet. There are thousands of animals who have had long productive lives because I wasn't there to treat them. What's the one advice you would give to any aspiring journalist right now? You're the watchdogs in society. You're there to play your part in a free society, which means hold the politicians to account. Keep them honest. Make sure they don't steal your money. How do you do that? By asking questions which are based on facts. Never ask a question to which you don't already know the answer. Eddie Rama, welcome to Conflict Zone. Louise Mushigiwabo, welcome to Conflict Zone. Michael Fuchs, welcome to Conflict Zone. President John Mahama, very warm welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you, Tim. Mr. Sebastian, do you have a Facebook account? No, absolutely not. Do you have a Twitter account? Absolutely not. What about Snapchat, Instagram, any of that? Absolutely not. You do know, though, that 1.5 billion people are on Facebook. That's actually more people than the population of China. 
I do. And my children told me very sternly, don't you dare have a Facebook account or a Twitter account. And I have to, you know, I have to be nice to my children because they get to choose my nursing home. A lot of the politicians that you interview every day, they are on Facebook and actually use social media to be in touch with their voters. Do you think that's a good development that now politicians can actually get in touch directly with their voters or do you think that's a critical kind of development? I think in some ways it's a pity because they think they don't need the press anymore because they can go straight to the consumer. They don't go through the filter of the press and they don't put themselves up for the tough questions that the press wants to ask. And that's a pity because we still have a role to play in asking those tough questions and in keeping the politicians honest. If you could interview any politician, any famous person, any person in the world, who's on top of your bucket list right now? Obama, Putin. And if you could travel back in time and talk to any person dead or alive? Winston Churchill. He's got a lot of stories to tell.